Alright, so, uh, commentary on this video. What we're going to be doing right now is, obviously I'm working with a single needle. Um, I am using Bloodline Skin Candy, uh, green, it's like Mantis, it's called Mantis, and I mixed it in with a little bit of white. What I'm doing is I'm going very light because I don't want to be, I don't want that area, those areas to be very dark, so... I'm just working like the first three layers of skin um, and as you can see it, it makes like a, a nice contrast kind of like hazel eyes you know what I'm saying I dropped it in the other areas because that's just what I wanted to do um, I'm keeping the skin lubricated with some A&D and just touching up some white highlights I don't think that, uh, yeah, I did rinse the needle. But what, what I'm doing is I'm hitting in these white areas, and you'll see me go over them a couple of good times. Usually, you only want to sink in the white one time, get in and get out. But the way that I'm doing this with the single needle, I'm, uh, I'm hitting it, and then I'm going to let it cool off. And if there's any swelling, take that swelling down, and then I'm going to hit it again. See, you can keep hitting it just as long as you're not tearing up the skin. And the way that I have my machine set right now, it's it's really soft. You know, the throw on it's it's around a uh, a little bit longer than a nickel. So I'm just adding some highlights, putting some depth in around. It's a small piece, so I don't have much to work with. But obviously, I'm working with uh, trying to achieve realism at this point I'm sorry about the background noise you probably hear that in all my videos but uh, until I move back to San Jose I'm pretty much stuck in the kitchen <laughs> kitchen scratcher yeah bitches so uh, still doing those little highlights dropping those in now it looks like I'm scratching and yeah that's exactly what I'm doing I'm going really fast over a certain area to achieve a certain um, a, a certain uh, texture a certain gradient because you go fast over an area, it gradiates well, you know, into another area. The slower that you go and the deeper, the darker, and so on and so forth. But if you go faster with the needle, gradient's going to be good. I try to utilize like the whole part of my paper towel and with paper towels you know go get the soft ones the hard ones are you know hard on your skin on your tattoo I've got really soft uh, paper towels right there it's moist showing you some of the little tiny detail work So I uh, freehanded with the needle um, that right section, and you'll see at the end, you know, it comes out pretty good. I didn't want to draw it on. I basically just wanted to run over this real quick and get it in there. It wasn't something that I was, you know, majorly focusing on. Um, right there, obviously, I'm having, I have a uh, pretty messed up wrist, though, uh, in my shooter hand. You know, I've shot a lot of weapons in my life and fought with that hand. And, you know, I've got calcium deposits over my tendons. And so I like to stretch out my, my hand. I'll show you an exercise to do uh, with your wrist before you start tattooing and also a good thing to do with your machine to build up those wrist and uh, hand muscles. There's a lot of bones in that hand.
So all right here, I'm going to be doing a uh, wrist movement. You know, your wrist kind of gets messed up, especially if you have messed up wrists, um, fights, or, you know, you start getting old age and arthritis and carpal tunnel syndrome and spanking it too much. So I'm going to show you guys uh, a little exercise on that and uh, how to hold your machine and all that, and it's going to be good to go good stuff right now what I'm doing is I'm just kind of digging in there um, real lightly I'm only penetrating like maybe three to four layers of skin um, the, the wrist okay so how I'm holding it right now is I'm trying to get a better angle on this you know obviously I'm working with trying to show you guys number one Number two, I'm, I'm working with the weight of the machine only. No stretch whatsoever except for stretching my, my wrist out, which hurts even more. And that it's a single needle. Um, and right now I'm just I'm freestyling with the needle. The other side of the uh, in the future oxygen uh, class there. Trying to match it up with the other side as best as possible. I don't want to move too much on my hand right there. A lot of blowouts. You can't, you can't, you know, tattoo the palm of the hand or the fingers too well. After a while, it's just going to go down to the, uh, the the fat layers and disperse itself, and the pigment won't hold. It'll eventually bleed. So that's why finger tattoos are always blurry, and palm tattoos, not a good idea. You know, um, I think it was Jesse James, pay up sucker, on his uh, palm. Even his looks bled out and he, he had it done by a pro so I mean you really want to look at where you're putting your tattoos um, right in here around her eyes you could see the detail that I put into her eyes but after time what's going to happen is the ink is going to bleed into each other and produce just a spot that's what's going to happen unfortunately but for a couple years I have a good uh Nice to find, um, realistic look there uh, behind that area, and this is a redo, so I, it, it's like I couldn't do as much as I wanted to do or could have done if it wasn't a redo. You know what I'm saying? So right now I'm just working out that that right hand area. That was my son saying hi. He loves to. I'll probably waltz over here and do that too. Um, you always hear them in the background until I get my official recording studio area going again I had a badass uh, music studio set up when I was in Stockton California a whole room was dedicated to music it was just uh, had some good artists come through there now he's touching it ow 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 yeah ow and no yeah it's unsanitary and my son's touching my tattoo you know what whatever my son has I'll take you know what I'm saying to the grave I know some people are probably going to say something about that, about my dirty black gloves in my kitchen. Hey, yo, I'm a scratcher. What do you want me to do? At least I'm wearing gloves in my own house, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I do, I'll teach you how to uh, put on some gloves and take them off the proper way, too. But, hey, as far as dirty gloves in my own home, come on. You must be an apprentice getting hell at work. Working this, this is kind of boring here. Um, the way that I'm holding it, I'm, I'm pretty much here. I'm digging in at a probably what 40 in the 40 range, no less than a 45. Uh, if I look at it correctly, it's probably like a 47, 48 degree angle. Um, I'm gonna be working uh, one on one with my boy Chino. Another shout for you, brother. Stay strong. Keep dishing out that gray wash, baby. I've got that log down, so. So, uh, what we're going to be doing right here is spraying it down some green soap. Um, believe that's some homemade green soap. We still got to get that video under wraps, too. So, we'll go ahead and kick it out checking it out seeing if I'm 
following. You know, the freestyle with that needle. You can see where I'm at with that. I didn't draw anything on at that point or nothing like that. So we're good to go. You know, uh, like I said before, get some soft paper tiles so you're not tearing your client up. You know, focus on things like that. Every, everything that you do during your tap process is going to be ultimately uh, looked at, viewed at, um, blamed on you afterwards. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to start running over that arm and uh, fixing it all up. Oh, excuse me. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm prepping it for color. I'm taking the edge off, okay? I have my needle hanging out, and without rinsing it in the cup, I've just taken it and uh, cleaned it off with, you know, scraping it off, and then uh, probably a quick rinse in the cup, and we're good to go for a color swap. A lot of the times in this video, you'll see me mix my ink inside of the, the uh, tattoo tube itself. So uh, just a little bit A and D. Get that area prepped up, pores opened up, sink some ink. Don't want it to be too gooped up, just moist. It's late, I'm in my PJs. Excuse that. Sorry about the yawns, guys. What is that, white? Okay, I'm going with the white highlights again. Um, technically, they're going to tell you, yo, you know what? Drop that white the first time, in and out, bam. But you know what? If you don't overwork the area and you're soft and you build up, especially with this single needle, you, you could tear someone up with this single needle real quick, real quick, if you don't know what you're doing. I like single needle work. It just takes forever. You know what I'm saying? But if your client says, yo, I don't care how long it takes, man. Let me tell you something. If you have a client that you're, that's willing to work with you for X amount of months, do just little parts of that tat and build up those colors. If you build up those colors, let it heal. Build them up. Let them heal. Build them up. Let me tell you something right now. That's going to be the most badass, most brilliant, vibrant tattoo that there is. If you can get a client like that, opposed to these people on the shops where it's in and out. Yeah, I'll do a free touch-up, whatever. Oh, come on, man. We're producing some brilliant art. We're going to get to the point where we're freaking, we're so good out here that, you know what? If we take their business, then they're doing something wrong. Don't come at us. Don't get crazy with, with us on the street because what? Oh, we're not OSHA certified? Bullshit, dude. I've got more freaking experience in, 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 as an EMT or certified military responder than freaking half those shop boys will ever have. Give me a break. Save your life in two seconds, homeboy. Give you a trach if you're choking. So anyways, I'm, I'm dropping uh, some white highlights. Just digging them in there. How they're going to heal is going to be pretty good. Um, I'm just going with the flow. I'm going where I think it needs to be. And it's flowing pretty well. Um, that arm needs to be touched up real good. Got a lot of work to do on that bad boy. So this is Waverly. Obviously, I'm showing you some Waverly white and some, I believe, Bill Waverly, some white, and um, some Fusion Red. Yes, it is the same manufacturer as Eternal, same chemist. That is true. I don't know about the rumors of Fusion already going down. I don't know why they're great, great ink. Awesome. So I'm mixing some white and some red, and I'm going to make brown eventually. Right now, this is going to brighten it up to a, like a pinkish, like a beret pinkish highlight color for the, for the highlights in the beret where the wider spot should be. Eventually, I think I'm going brown here, though. More like a, brow, a brownish brick red, I believe. Probably. Let's see if I add a little drop of black. If I can remember. Yep. Little black Buddha. 
It's a little runny. I like it. One drop, I say. I think I get two in there. Nope. I think I got one. Good job. That bottle's weird. You don't squeeze it. You kind of shake it to, to get it out. Yep. So one drop. Going to mix it up and make brown. A little bit of white, a little bit of red, a little bit of black. Boom. Nice little brick red brown. More like a Hershey squirt chocolate, but no, it's not. Can't tell by the video, but it's more like a brick red. And I believe I, I highlight this one. Oh, okay. I want to make it a little bit uh, brighter hue. You know, if you stick to when you're buying your inks, stick to your primary colors, okay? You stick to your, your blacks, your reds, your greens, your you know, your darker hues. Hey, Chino, you know, we talked about this. If you stick to those primary colors, you'll be able to make, you know, out of 10 colors, you'll be able to make 50. Out of 50, you'll be able to make 1,000. Out of 1,000, 10,000. You, it's limitless of what you can do. You don't have to buy the whole palette, the whole $80, you know, or, you know, $300 set for 80 tubes. You can make your own. Study the color wheel. Study that, uh, the gradients. And learn how to mix colors because you could take that palette and make your own. It's like me and Chino were talking about. You know, he made his own, and people were like, "Yo, what freaking color is that? What blue is that? What green is that?" Dude, I don't. You know, I just I go as I go, man, and and I made my own. But uh, yeah, that's how you you do it in in this. You know what? Make your own colors, dude. And whatever you're doing, log that down. Write it down as a chemist would. You know, a chemist doesn't make uh, uh, perfection right off the bat. He makes mistakes. And then what does he do? He writes down everything that he's doing and then corrects the mistakes. But he goes back, and now he's got a brilliant freaking color or brilliant robot or Frankenstein that is actually good, you know? And uh, I robot that's that's got a green heart and a blue heart instead of a red heart. You know what I'm saying? So right here I'm just adding some uh, dark layers in the beret trying to give it a wrinkle effect maybe like a folding the folding areas if you've ever wearing a worn a, a beret before you know what i'm talking about so oh okay so i'm gonna dip it in white and i'm gonna mix in the tube what i already have okay and so i mixed in the tube so what does it give me a lighter variance of what i just did Okay, let's say this. It was dark at first. I made the brown, the brick bread brown, right? So then I dipped it in the white because I know I want a wider highlight of what I just made. So I dipped it in white and I mixed it in the tube with the stuff that was already inside. And now I have a wider hue and pigment than what I had on my skin just right before. That's a cute little clue right there, dude. Fun stuff. Don't, don't be afraid to do this on your clients. And this is why I work on myself. People, I've had a couple of people, yo, why are you working on yourself? You know, if you're this, you're, dude, the more that I train on myself and screw myself up, the more that I'm going to learn not to screw anybody else up. Isn't that what you guys want us to do? Your pros, you quote professionals, but you want us to screw ourselves up opposed to screwing everybody else up. But wait a second. Then you're a hypocrite because you say, oh yeah, go ahead. You know, screw all these people up in the public, scratch them up, baby. Scar them up, baby, because you know what? They come to us, and it's more business for us. Wrong. They don't want to go to you guys anymore. You guys are assholes. Period. It's us against you. We're going to win. Fold your flags down. Put your sashes down in my little bucket right here. Cage's corner right there. And join my side, because you're going to lose. You want to be on the winning team or the losing team, dude? Anyways, I just it really pisses me off. I'm going to do these uh, interviews with some of these shops around here. What am I saying here? Probably stop talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm mixing it in the tube again. It, you know, it's a really good thing to mix in that tube. And you see how far I'm hanging out? I'm hanging out past the nickel. I'm not riding the tube, and I'm not riding um, straight needle depth. I'm going off the tips of the, of the needles. I'm telling you I'm going to scratch a little bit. This gives you a certain technique. The quicker that you go on the skin and the lighter that you go, it gives you a certain uh, texture. Okay, and that's what I'm doing here. I'm building up on top of the surface of the skin. Um, don't build too light because 
it's just going to fall off. Once you start getting the onion peel after a week and you get that onion peel, it's going to freaking fall off. And then what you just did is going to be gone. So, But if you build it up and then keep building it, each time that you do that, you've already uh, traumatized the skin to a certain degree to where it's going to sink lower. And that's what you do want in some cases. You do not want to turn that skin into hamburger meat. And how you guys are doing that is probably sinking those needles and taking them in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And you're going deep with it. If you go light and do that, like I'm doing, you're fine. It's not hard on the client. It's not hard on the skin. Uh, the texture remains the same. You're building up, especially with the single needle. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm building up the darker lines now, again, and going around the uh, details. Uh, looks like shadowing up under the eyes and around the edges, yeah. Giving it some contrast, giving it some uh, depth perception. Always keep a moist towel. Pat and then wipe. Pat and then wipe. Nice and gentle. Dealing with an open wound. Uh, at this point, it's looking good. You can tell where I'm going with it. Really want to see where I'm at, so I added some green soap to it. I'm really wiping it down. Yep, looking good. I want to drop some more white. White, uh, for me, th my technique and my styles, I like realism. And I like really detailed pieces. Really detailed. I don't like the, you know, the Minnie Mouse one that I'm doing. I don't like that because it's just more, that's just too traditional for me. I like doing a full city scene on someone's back with the with the power lines sparking. You know what I'm saying? A, a little tiny blackbird on top of the wire taking a shit on a car. That's the kind of work that I like to do. You know what I mean? The airplanes flying in the distance and you see people's heads and a little kid waving high eating a, a Snickers. That's what I like to do. Okay? Adding some more. Can't get enough of them white highlights for me. I'm not digging in here right off the bat, drilling and getting out. Not happening. Still doing it, understanding that uh, it's difficult with just the machine and my one hand. If I had two hands on a nice canvas, it'd be over. But I understand that I'm working with myself, on myself, one arm, one hand, one machine, trying to orchestrate that whole thing. I've got really good um, needle control though. Ink flow is perfect. I know you guys want an ink flow video. It's going to come. Because that's very important. It's crucial. It's really simple. The further that you ride the tube, the more uh, ink you're going to have flow out onto the skin. I've showed you in areas on here where I've got ink on the skin that I'm actually re-dipping in and using instead of re-dipping into the cap. You can do that. You know, if... A way to puddle it up on purpose is, bam, slam slam that needle into the skin and hit the tube. You uh, you go in pretty deep. Don't <laughs> your client's gonna feel it a little bit, but it's all the same. You don't dig it to their bone, but you just real quick, pssst, straight in. Don't ruin your work. Hit the tip of that tube. Drop a little bit of ink out there and just utilize that that puddle. What I'm doing is uh, I'm taking those white highlights and I'm building those up. A lot of these shop guys probably disagree with me. You know, they're on a time frame, dude. They're like waiters and, or should I say waitresses in little fast food restaurants. You know what I mean? Like Sizzlers or something. They're in there and they're trying to flip, not even waiters, they're bus, bus girls. And they're trying to flip tables to hurry up and get the next client in so they can get more money. But that's not what it's about. I say cool at this point. I must be happy with it. Feels okay. It's just a bee sting. 
The wrist is very, uh, excuse me. The wrist is very tender. Uh, for you pros out there that argue with me and tell me I shouldn't be doing this at home and blah, blah, blah. Um, what is the best training in the world than to do it to yourself and to tattoo parts in various parts of your body and feel what it is like that your client is going to be going through? No, you're the one that goes in and I sit down and you drill into my freaking skull. And I'm like, bro, you sure you know what you're doing, dude? Because this shit is killing. Let me have a break. I need to smoke real quick. You know what I'm saying? No. You tattoo yourself, you know what to do. You know how it feels. You know how fast to move your hand, your hand speed, your depth control, your needle control, the, the flow and movement of the body and the zones where, the, where, you should, where you need to get that proper stretch and spread out those veins so that you're, you're smashing the vein down and you can actually know what depth you're going at, at a proper depth. You know what I'm saying? So you shop boys, stay away from... Uh, uh, telling me I shouldn't be doing this on myself. Bullshit, I shouldn't. We all should. And if you you don't have any work that you've done on yourself, like on your legs, you're not an artist, dude. If you haven't sunk ink into your own skin, to me, I don't respect you. That's just me. I don't know. Even some of you guys, you know, on my side might not agree with that, but that's just how I'm gonna be. I don't. I will not respect anybody coming at me. If they haven't dropped ink or a needle into their skin. Okay? You could just do it dry. You can do a bloodline, man. Don't don't even have no ink on it and just drill that needle into you and know how it feels. When we're in the military and we're training in police academies, you know why we get sprayed down with OC? You know why we're stuck in NBC chambers? You know, and, and getting gassed down by chemicals? In the gas chambers, it's so that we trust our equipment. Number one, number two, that we we don't excessively abuse these chemicals, or batons, or our weapon training, or our tactics, or our pressure point and control systems. This is done on us because we need to feel what it is like before we go to the public with it. We need to know that we can trust our equipment, our gas mask, when a scud missile's coming in, and we need to have that gas mask on our face. This is why you need to tattoo yourself, to know what you're doing to your client and to know exactly what it feels like. You know, and, and, and uh, that's real. That's some real talk right there. You know, there's a reason why we go through the excruciating training that we have to go through, the X-26 taser you know how many times I've been tased? Oh my God, not fun. 560,000 volts, two prongs like a fish hook in your back, dude. Ugh. Feels like you're going to shit yourself, but you don't. So anyways, um, yeah. So of course you got to tattoo yourself, man. I, and I, why you sit there and tattoo yourself all day? Because I want to be the best. I don't want to screw nobody up. I've tattooed many people. And in, in the beginning of my works, oh my goodness. Did I scar some people up? Yep. Did they come back and I was like, oh shit, yep. Did, <laughs> did they come back and I was like, uh, let's get back to that right now. Yep. Have I ever spread a, a freaking disease? Nope. MRSA? Nope. Regular staff? Nope. You know what I'm saying? I practice good hygiene. But I'm done here. So clap, clap, and peace, baby. And uh, thanks for subscribing. That was a quick tutorial by yours truly. Um, and I'll be in Florida for a week, and, and I'll probably uh, upload this as soon as possible. Thank you guys very much for tuning in, and more to come. Stay tuned and keep that movement strong. Let's do this. The Illuminati will not break us down. We will break through this. We will never change. Never back down. Never ever.
Ready to fight, ready to kill. I'm ready to die, but I never will. Peace.